again. Thank you, everybody, for being here on the first episode of the SharePoint TV. Uh, before we get started, since this is actually kind of the first episode, the pilot in the series, uh, my name is Vlad Kafunesko. I'll be your host for the whole series. And the goal of this episode is really to have a weekly show where we can bring you the latest news from both Microsoft, so all of the stuff that's coming up, all of the latest and greatest things, as well as from the community, from MVPs, from professionals that actually implement them and have to work with those technologies and hit not only the how it's supposed to work in docs.microsoft.com, but actually what happens when you implement it at a real client. So the goal is really going to be to have a balance of knowledge from both sides of the spectrum. Uh, we have already done the quick introduction from one of our amazing supporters, Valo Intranet. And from what I saw in the chat, the sound actually worked uh, for that one. So I'm happy it worked. So we're going to welcome our first guest right away, Sue Hanley. Give them. And somebody asked if you can hold a picture up of Vlad while you're on. <laughs> No, I'll hold a picture up of my granddaughter, though. Nothing of Vlad. You don't have pictures of me? I probably do, Vlad. <laughs> I have a picture of us when we went to the zoo. Yes, the zoo in Australia was amazing. Yeah. Okay, we don't. We only have about 30-something minutes left for both you and Mark. Uh, so let's talk about a bit of <laughs> SharePoint and... Is it wine time yet? Yes, is wine time for those of you who asked. Uh, so we talked a bit about modern SharePoint, classic SharePoint, and how people get that reaction, especially content editors that had to create content in uh, classic SharePoint. They had to, uh, they had to go into page layouts, uh, go into web part properties, it crashed some of the time if they were not using Internet Explorer, and they kind of hated it. And now you show them modern SharePoint, and they're like, hey, is this WordPress, or what platform are you showing me? And uh, What's your experience with, has been with really showing people modern SharePoint, and what are some of the latest things that you've learned? So, um. As we talked about when no one could hear us, I think modern people are absolutely thrilled with modern SharePoint. In fact, I must have said five times yesterday, if you're familiar with SharePoint, this is not your grandmother's SharePoint. It looks completely different. It's much easier to use. Actually, even your grandmother could um, use it. Um, so I think the, in, the user interface for editing pages and telling great stories is really phenomenal. And right now I'm kind of um, really excited about a few sort of actually relatively minor things, but really help with the storytelling on pages. So I love the fact that if I use H1, H2, and H3 tags, I can get an automatic anchor link to, if I have to write a long page. The goal is to always try and keep your page content short, but if you have to make it long, being able to have an anchor tag on a page is just huge. And not only can I use them on a page, but I've been using them a lot uh, uh, actually to cross page linking. So if I, I want to link to a particular topic on one page from another, I can use that as well. And again, it's about creating a really meaningful story and having the main event of your content story on page A and having a hyperlink to ancillary and related content to help someone who needs more information about the topic get it. So huge fan of anchor links. Also love that sort of out of the blue, we got new knobs and dials. You know, we were talking about the knobs and dials of Twitch. Well, we got some really new great knobs and dials on the news web part so that we can show or hide the author in the news web part, show or hide the first published date, show or hide the number of page views. This is really huge in giving page editors the opportunity to, again, tell their story in ways that either don't focus on who actually wrote the article or other things about it. And it gives you a lot of choice that people have been asking for. So anchor links, number one, knobs and dials and news, number two. And then, of course, can't go without talking about my favorite web part, which is highlighted content. And it just got the ability to create complex filters. And that, to me, also game-changing in terms of connecting related content. 
So really, really excited about that. I also love the call to action button. Um, I just like because it gives you a really nice visual link to a, a visual way of creating a link to content. So I think that's super cool. Um, really like that. And then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna close because I wanna let Mark talk, but there is one thing that to me has been life-changing in the past week, and that is site URL rename. Uh, I am just over the moon about this. Mark is clapping. It's to me the, this is, this is my, you know, ampersands were the greatest thing from like 2016. This has really been game changing for me. So I renamed my first site over the weekend on my t own tenant to make sure I wouldn't mess it up when I tried it on a client tenant. I did it on the client tenant last night where we had uh, originally created a site to hold all the quality policies. And after seeing how great it was for just quality, the organization um, rethought the question I'd asked them in the beginning. Shouldn't we call this policy center? Because won't everyone want to put their policies there? Well, sure enough, we decided that that's what we wanted to do, but the URL didn't match the name of the site. And I kept saying, let's just wait. We want to create that consistent experience. And so last night, I, I renamed that entire site from Quality Sys, which is what we called it before, to Policy Center spelled with an R-E, because the company's based in Canada, and worked really <laughs> Yes, <quickly>. yes. <laughs> worked really quickly, worked really well, and here's the one little piece of advice that I would give you, because this is what I learned. We'd been linking to the Policy Center from all the other 20 or so sites in that intranet, and while it will absolutely do its thing and rename everything on the site that you rename, all the hyperlinks to it are still have the old URL, which works perfectly because all the redirects work. But one of the things I realized is that just to make it completely visually consistent, and since I had built all the other sites, I spent about a half an hour trying to root out all the different pointers to that new Policy Center site and updating the URL myself, uh, just to create that consistent visual experience. It's not necessary to do, but I realized that although this is an enormous gift, being able to rename a site, there are some implications if we had been um, navigating to that site with an explicit URL link. So just something to think about. Do you know if there's any ways out there, like so you have it linked in documents, you have it linked in other places. Do you know if there's any ways to automatically find them or uh, right now it's more about waiting for people to complain in a way if you don't find them yourself and then uh, you go and fix them because I mean it works yeah. like you said I don't think it actually breaks anything it's just a visual for yeah. people with OCD uh, like my friend Eddie who's probably watching uh, from <laughs> Ballo, uh kind of hey why do I see quality here and then I go to policy center uh, at the end right it, it would actually if anyone is paying attention to the URL it might make them think oh, something's broken, it went to the wrong place. Even though the label, honestly, the label on the link uh, said Policy Center. There's just okay. that like little visual disconnect. So um, maybe PowerShell? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I, there's probably some way beyond um, my area of expertise. I said don't ask me any hard questions. So um, you, oh. are, you already failed. Um, no, nobody <laughs> else did. So I still have all those boxes of swag I was getting I said, ready you get to ship out. Stuff. So so I, 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 I had to send them to somebody. It's not going to cost me a lot this time. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. like an opportunity for someone to write that code. <laughs> yes, I know there is a few third parties out there, but I don't know of any. I, you know I love PowerShell. Yeah. I, I haven't figured out a way with PowerShell yet, but that might give me a weekend project if... If something, if I don't have anything to do, I'll go deep dive and see if I can figure out something for that. All right, I'll test it if you do it. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. And I see we're at about one, it's 135 for me. So we'll just say 35 minutes over the hour. And, oh, there is a hard question time then. I'm sorry, Sue. It's oh. not me. I might have encouraged it, but it's not my fault. Uh, the number of web perks available in modern pages is getting long, especially when developers are adding new custom web perks to that list. Are there uh, are there any plans to add sections to the add web part pop-up 
in modern pages. I think this is a really good time to transition to Mark. I know, right? All right, awesome. Well, we're going to keep that question for Mark in a few minutes. But, Sue, thank you very much for taking the time. I know it hasn't been perfect because of some audio issues, but in the chat, we had a lot of people that asked uh, to record your part and share it after. So if we get a chance, especially for those of you watching, uh, we're going to try to do a quick recording and share it after here on YouTube, on Twitter, a bit all over the place. Uh, because as you guys have said, uh, Sue shared a lot of great stuff and we don't want you guys to miss out on it. And uh, thank you for understanding. <clears throat> and Sue, thank you very much again. Any last things, any last kind of jabs you want to throw at Mark before his face is on the screen? This is your last chance. Nah, I, um, it was oh. really a pleasure, and uh, no, I don't have anything bad to say about Mark, although Mark, you know, we do have that little book we're working on together, Good Night Metadata. <laughs> There's two that we're bouncing around, Good Night Metadata and possibly Good Night Subsites. <laughs> I, I understand the Good Night Subsites. I understand that one, <laughs> the data. I, I'd love I, to know a bit more I, about that. I believe it started as a love poem that <laughs> Sue had for the love of metadata. And in another tone, she may say, for the love of whomever you may subscribe to, please add metadata. Please add metadata. Yeah, so the it's subset a, one was more of a goodbye. Yeah, yeah. The tone okay, metadata is, really is just a good night. The text. Yeah. Yeah, and if you know the, the book Good Night Moon, it follows that same pattern. I do not know that book, but look into it, I guess. I... <laughs> it's a it's a quick read. I'll just say that. It's a very quick read. Awesome. And, and most parents can recite the entire book by heart. <laughs> if you say, in the great green room, to yeah. anyone who is a parent, they can probably tell you what comes next. You know what? I'll try that. <laughs> I'll try that when I see some of the friends from the community at Ignite in a few weeks. See if that trick works. <laughs> uh, but Mark... You're now up on the screen. Yes. Uh, are luckily, we... you are live. We're uh, live. I can see you're... that. I'm curious if there's any echo, audio, or plugging away and all is good. We'll find that out in a few seconds. So far, everybody said all good. So let's just wait uh, for another confirmation from this one. Everything is good. Perfect. Okay, so Mark... I've been working for Microsoft for ever since I started working with Microsoft Technologies. You were at Microsoft, so I, I'm sure that a lot of people already know you. But there's also a lot of people new in the community. So can you tell us who you are, what you do at Microsoft, in a bit? I know right now you're in the OneDrive team, but how did you get there? What did you work on in the past? Yeah, uh, so hello everybody and thanks for sticking with us through all the audio and uh, some of the visual noise, but I think we're good and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm about 15 years in at working at Microsoft and about three quarters of that has been working with SharePoint in some way. Um, most recently I'm focused on OneDrive and SharePoint in the collab space uh, with a lot of what we do with Microsoft Teams. Um, before that one claim to fame is I was the first product manager for SharePoint Online when we first moved to the cloud. So that was kind of fun to learn the ropes of SharePoint and also, you know, what is this thing we call the cloud? And that was before it was called Office 365. So if you remember BPOS, uh, I was the BPOS product manager for SharePoint Online. <clears throat> and before that, I was building a solution on top of SharePoint for digital asset management. Uh, and that was in the services side of Microsoft. So. If you wanted a, a digital asset management system built on top of SharePoint, we were your crew. Um, but yeah, we're just now heads down getting ready for Ignite and getting all the announcements ready, getting all the demos ready, and getting ready to unleash a whole bunch of new stuff across SharePoint, OneDrive, Yammer, Stream, and oh yeah, there's a whole other part of the company, Azure, Dynamics, <laughs> Windows, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a big show. How, how is it working at Microsoft, especially in your role the last three weeks before Ignite? Uh, it's a lot of meetings and uh, certainly a lot of 
you know, if everything Jeff, then it means you can reuse it and repurpose it. You know, sort of once Jeff has talked about it, uh, then you can show it and, and use it. And uh, the Jeff that I'm talking about is is our leader, Jeff Teeper. Uh, and certainly on the marketing side, you know, we've got uh, Dan Holm and Seth Patton all the way up to Kurt Konigsbauer that are just full steam ahead. Um, a lot of checkpoints, a lot of code that's being written that's going to be the first time it's being shown. Uh, there are a lot of things, some of what uh, Sue had talked about that is going to be sort of the general availability reveal. Uh, exciting times, obviously, we've shipped a lot of what we talked about at the SharePoint conference. Um, but Ignite, obviously, is another big moment. There's some new things that I think people will be surprised about. So a lot of it is just getting our ducks in a row. And uh, to be honest, you know, the ducks are still swimming, paddling like crazy underwater. Um, but uh, it, it's a lot of alignment. Um, and I'm currently managing two blogs that will go live that day. Just put out a pre-beef pre-brief blog that I was going to reference if you want to see sort of the narrow view of the SharePoint, OneDrive, Yammer, and Stream sessions. Um, that just went live this morning just as a call out. Hey, if you're interested in what we're doing, um, there's a lot of great sessions, a lot of great speakers. Uh, this, this takes the lens of, of the Microsoft speakers. Certainly, there's a whole plethora of great MVP speakers, great workshops. You know, it's just getting that all ready and a lot of excitement, a lot of nervousness, to be honest. Um, but in all of the checkpoint meetings, again, if you look at what Jeff's going to do, it sort of cascades. We're going to be okay if Jeff shows okay. <laughs> uh, and his last check-in point went really well. It was amazing t for the 45-minute session, which is Jeff's big, you know, SharePoint, OneDrive, Yammer, and Stream session plus Office. That 45 minutes, there literally were about 50 people in the room giving, you know, the thumbs up. We'll tweak this. We'll tweak that. So pretty exciting. And if you look at Jeff on Twitter, he he's posted a couple pictures from those meetings. Uh, so a lot of good energy, a lot of a lot of people getting ready. That's awesome. And you mentioned about the blog. For those of you that do not know, uh, the product team actually blogs on the tech community. So the site is techcommunity.microsoft.com. Uh, I don't have the screen shared, so you're just going to have to imagine with me. You click on blogs on the top on the top nav, and then you're going to see the latest blogs from across the Microsoft product teams. And, and Mark actually has blogs, podcasts, and a lot of things on there. So I think that's a great what Mark is working on. Yeah, the easiest way to get to the SharePoint blog, and you can do it for OneDrive, Yammer, and Stream with the same pattern, is just aka.ms slash SharePoint slash blog. And just replace SharePoint with OneDrive, Stream, or Yammer, and you can get to all those blogs. Same tech community. Uh, and for the podcast, just to pitch it out there, if you like listening to podcasts, especially listen to a couple on your way to Ignite or during Ignite, get some get some pod walks in. Just go to aka.ms slash the, and that's all one word, T-H-E-I-N-T-R-A-Z-O-N-E. Awesome. I'm sharing them in the chat. Uh, but let's get to the main topic. Sure. We're really close to Ignite, but I've heard that you still had some OneDrive news that you wanted to show us demos. Yeah, I was just going to talk about OneDrive for a little bit. You know, most recently, one of the bigger things that we've released was what we call differential sync. So that's the ability we've had with Office documents. Anytime you make a small change, imagine you're working in a large Excel document that possibly is connected up to Power BI, and you make just a one number change or a new calculation, and you save that. A lot of times with the old sync technology, you would have to resync the entire file. Uh, but for Office, we've been working with differential sync for a while, so it only syncs the delta changes. Now that transfers over to any file type. So if I'm working on a movie file in Adobe Premiere, that I've saved in OneDrive SharePoint. Uh, when I make a change to a scene, I add a layer, I, I change the title card, do whatever it is, we'll now only sync that delta change. And since we support up to a 15 gig file, imagine the network and bandwidth constraints that it would be if you were syncing the file each time, if it was a very large file. The other scenario that we're happy to support is we support now CAD files. So if you have Autodesk, you can store Autodesk in high fidelity in SharePoint and OneDrive. You get a great preview. You can go full screen to see what it is without requiring somebody to have AutoCAD. Um, but we also now support the connection to the AutoCAD web app. 
So the file stays in OneDrive or SharePoint. You open it up in the Auto Web Cab app that loads like you would expect in the browser, uh, still keep the file in place. And if you start working on it, you add a layer, you change some textures, you do whatever you do in AutoCAD, that file certainly will uh, immediately go right back into the service. But if I opened it in my desktop client, I made some changes, or I just was working on that file and, and at some point it was syncing to another device, only that delta change. So differential sync will be great win for end users for performance and a great win for IT, especially as you think about not just one person making changes, but your entire company going through that same you know, channel out into the internet, into the our data centers. It saves a lot on bandwidth. Yes, um, especially for people that press save. Like, you know, when you do a small change, press control S. Do another small change, control S. Yep, yep. How does that work from a versioning perspective? I see this question a lot. How does that kind of, you? we have it now, especially with auto save, differential sync. How does the versioning handle that many saves in a way? Yeah, so if there are technically versions of the file, obviously you're you're saving to the latest version if you haven't generated a, a major or a minor version. Um, but it's not doing it on every single action that you do. It's certainly saving it at the intervals similar to autosave. Um, whenever there's a write to the file that triggers, you know, the the notion of wanting to sync something. Uh, but it's within seconds, you know, so that if you're making a big save change, you actually physically click save. That will instantiate it. Uh, if you're working, 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 and at some point, you know, there's enough to go across the wire, um, I'd have to get in with our sync team to get, you know, the finer, finer details. Um, but across versions, certainly that's pretty easy. And as you're working in that autosave mode, uh, there is a consistent connection to the sync client. Um, but I don't believe it's on as I type a word, you know, S U E you know, Sue, that that would uh, be saving every time with the S, the U, and the E. Um, but it's a big, big change in terms of when there is anything syncing across the wire. It's syncing as least, the, the least amount of uh, ones and zeros as it can. That's, that's, that's awesome. On the, the sort of more visible side of things, um, we're doing a lot with the mobile client. So if you've got OneDrive mobile, um, there's been a redesign, uh, and this is starting with iOS and coming to Android. Uh, the big one that everybody uh, reacted a lot to on Twitter, which is whether you like it or not, is dark mode. You know, all of our apps are getting dark mode. So OneDrive joined the party with Outlook and now uh, OneNote and, you know, certainly to do and whatnot. Um, beyond dark mode, certainly when you get into the dark and you're working in dark mode, um, there's a lot of redesign in terms of experiences. The sharing mechanism just got a little bit more finger friendly um, and the annotations have got more friendly. And so the, the, combination of one thing that we did with Samsung. So Samsung had a big event called Unpacked, and they came out with a couple new phones, the, the Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus. And the big thing that it's known for is having the pen, that they call it the S yeah. Pen. And so in OneDrive, if you want to go and mark up a PDF, and maybe sue soon to mark up a page in SharePoint, I don't know, I can't predict, but uh, certainly you can imagine uh, with a PDF or if you did a scan, so you can of course take a picture of a receipt and maybe write the names of the people that you went to dinner with. That would be really easy to do on a Note 10. It's certainly easy to do with your fingers. And, and the annotation canvas, mm -hmm. uh, annotations canvas in the OneDrive app, not only does the scanning use the old office lens technology, but it's got a new redesign that makes it so you can choose colors more easily. You can choose the, the density of your pen. Uh, you can add text and, and notes, uh, both both written and sort of like a sticky note with a lot of text that you can type. Um, so the surface area of the OneDrive mobile, really easy to share, really friendly to use. And of course, as you would expect with OneDrive, it's access to all files. So Sue was talking about a number of files in a SharePoint site. If I'm working with just files, that's OneDrive's role to get you back to your recent content, to be able to share it easily. Uh, and it adheres to all the permissions. It permissions to see certain files, the OneDrive app through the web, through the sync client, through the mobile client, uh, wouldn't allow you to work with or see those files. So never breaks permissions, but it gives you visibility into everything that you should or do have access to. Um, One quick question before you yeah. continue. Yeah. And and this will be open to the chat as well. Dark mode, personally? I do. I do. In fact, I've got, I use an Android phone, so I've got a Pixel 3 XL. 
And with the Android 10 update, you can turn on dark mode by default for the entire operating system. And most apps, especially you know ones that have been updated recently, will just adhere to that choice of yes or no dark mode. Um, and I've kept it in dark mode. I thought I wouldn't like it, to be honest, because there are times in the sun it's a little hard to see. Um, but you know, I've just gotten used to just cranking up the the uh, brightness, and I actually like it. And especially at the nighttime, uh, if you're reading in in an actual dark room, or you're just in, you know in a in, inside, it is a lot easier for me to see. And I think this is not an, a Microsoft app, of course, but I think the one that really makes it pop, which is true when you're in OneDrive, the same is if I'm looking at a picture. So if I have an image okay. that I've stored in OneDrive, but really what I was going to share was the Instagram app actually has a really nice dark mode so that when I'm sifting through posts of people's pictures, um, dark mode really brings pictures alive just in a way that uh, seems pretty obvious, but I, I didn't realize that I would like it so much. So if I'm consuming video or pictures, especially with a little Chrome showing, the Chrome that does show doesn't seem to uh, interrupt the visual nature of the picture. On my side, I'm still getting used to it in a way. I, I've now turned on the automatic, where it at a certain time at night, or depending on the how much light there is, it actually turns it on automatically for the whole phone. So the notification, things like that, and some of the apps as well. And that I've really gotten used to. But as some people in the chat said, I've always used dark mode for the kind of for when coding, when doing PowerShell scripts, things like that. Yep. And now it's just weird for me to go into Outlook or go into like a OneDrive and it be dark all the time. It's really not something I got used to as a permanent thing yet. It, it, it's a, I like that we have the option and it's a personal thing. Some people love it, some people don't, but it's really cool that that option is there. Well, to give you to give you an indication, uh, and certainly take this as one channel of, of interest, when we posted kind of a fun video for OneDrive, hey, OneDrive dark mode, you know, we just did sort of a, it's now light mode, now it's dark mode, and <laughs> you know, it was just a simple little video. With the OneDrive social handle Twitter report that we get, uh, it was one of the highest engaged, you know, actually watching the entire thing and people engaging on that to go learn more. And the weird thing is. A lot of our design posts are posted on Medium, so medium.com, yeah. and uh, it got a ton of traction. It was partly, you know, news with Outlook that has, you know, pretty, uh, pretty broad interest and a lot of people engaging. But it was, you know, Outlook, OneDrive, and soon coming to OneNote that that notion. Uh, so take it for what it is. People like dark mode, so maybe maybe in the future there will be SharePoint dark mode. That would be that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a lot of focus, as Sue pointed out, just making the, the end user experience better. Uh, and there's certainly the approach of being able to customize it, how you want to present it to your users. There's a lot that we do that's by default out of box so that it is a great experience. How that translates into the SharePoint mobile app uh, certainly adheres to your themes, your branding. You know, we're, we're focused really big on, on that. I don't want to spoil anything here because it's coming in a couple weeks, but there's more work, obviously, on the design side. There's a lot more choice. There's some default things that you'll see happen in mobile. Uh, pretty exciting. So I think we're listening. Uh, you know, the, the voice that comes through user voice and just the nature of behavior. Where do you see engagement? What are people interested in? Not to only do that, but certainly to, to listen and, and make it as a great experience. Um, with giving the tools, of course, to then make it even better that's unique to each customer. It's, it's a big focus. There's, there's a huge design team. and they... By the way, you're being encouraged in the chat to spoil things. If, <laughs> if, if you ever want to, nobody in here is going to say anything. Okay, uh, well, maybe I'll invite a friend of mine who will, who will talk about you know, one big spoiler alert. That's, that's a big friend of yours. <laughs> No, he. This is the SharePoint monkey. He's got a lot to say in about two weeks. Is the gotta, SharePoint gotta monkey? Got to save a little juice. Got to save. Is a little the SharePoint juice. monkey gonna get a new T-shirt, a teal T-shirt? He should. He should. This is <laughs> this is uh, from days of old. Uh, so for me, it's it's nice memory. But he does need to be updated a little, little bit, and uh, I think even his Twitter handle needs to be a little bit updated. So t we'll see if we can make him a teal uh, cape. 
that'd be awesome. Uh, another quick question from the chat. Uh, or you can spoil when the SharePoint Home is coming out. Ah, so there's two th things that I'm just going to answer, but not answer. So the SharePoint Home page, as it was in the past, is now starting to roll out, which is the SharePoint Start page. So that starts to connect to SharePoint Home Sites. Um, we're certainly going to be talking about it uh, loud at the SharePoint con at the uh, Ignite conference. Um, how they're going to SharePoint Home Sites, the actual new technology, is something that I've got to I got to save a little bit. Uh, but I think we're stay sticking to our our timeline target, if not you know pretty close. Uh, and from what I've seen, it's very ready. Uh, and again, you can't miss it if you look at. Jeff Session, if you're there on site, if you're streaming it live and viewing it from afar, uh, a lot of news around intranet, a lot of news around the other workloads as well. Um, but definitely there's a lot of home, 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 and how it connects to the previous <laughs> SharePoint tile experience I think is unique and, and a big win. So I'm, I'm doing good with my PMM hat on, not breaking other people's news. <laughs> I, I'm trying. And by the way, <laughs> Uh, the person that asked said, I'm pleased with your answer, Mark. So if if ever politics is in your ideas after Microsoft <laughs> marketing, seems you're doing a good job. Wait, wait that is a landmine uh, that I will step clear of. <laughs> I, I think also the SharePoint Home will be interesting for Sue as well from an information architecture perspective and for everybody designing intranets of, okay, we have communication sites, hub sites, no more subsites, but we have SharePoint Home. Yeah. How do they all work together now? And it's going to be interesting to see for how will people change existing intranets oh, to oh, add yeah. that I functionality. Can't, I can't wait to hear Sue kind of piece together that if you had a classic team site, kind of converting that to your root site with the site swap, updating it so it's really a modern site and making it so that it's the center of your organization, maybe making it a hub site adding some news elements, getting in there with all of the page metadata so that things appear and show up in highlighted content and all the page details that you can layer in with thumbnailing and anchoring. And, you know, there's a lot that now gives the right tools that Sue has been asking for. And, of course, Sue represents a big, huge number of people that have been building their intranets very gladly on SharePoint already, but really taking it to this next level. Um, and seeing that translate to big and small screens, different ways of presenting to different people. Uh, one, one of the big intranet announcements certainly is, uh, you know, we've been talking about Canada from the U.S. and different languages. There's some funness that uh, you can imagine that intranets and how they can grow up there. Uh, so, yeah, so really, really great to see people using it. And we really are seeing it from a metric perspective, pure agnostic of who the customers are. Just at scale, people doing more a one-to-many type portal and, you know, layer in whatever word makes you feel comfortable these days. But being able to bring it to where they want it, maybe at the root of their site or making it a hub or combining, you know, a lot of different portalettes into, you know, this broader experience. And then, you know, hopefully you chatted with Sue or somebody like her that gave you the notion of, hold on, before you do anything, let's plan it out. Let's think about what is what is your favorite word, Sue? What is the outcome that we want? Um, and we hope we give you the no matter what your outcome is, the way to get there. That's what that that's our goal. Awesome. I'm looking at the time, and I'm sure Lyman will start talking soon. Uh, but I only got time for one more question. Sure. The question is: Do you have any information about variations? SharePoint Modern, and I think this has to talk a bit about multilingual in the back. So I'll let you answer that one uh, for the ghost inside 90, and oh. then we're going to have to go. But this is this has been asked for a while, multilingual. Yeah, so maybe, Vlad, if I can ask you, since you possibly have a little bit of French in your background, um, maybe we can switch over to speaking in French to answer the question. Bien sûr, n'importe quoi. <laughs> Je pense que le, le event Ignite, c'est possible pour un uh, intranet avec deux langues comme uh, anglais ou peut-être uh, française. C'est possible peut-être, mais peut-être maintenant je ne parle pas parce que le bon nouveau, uh, je sais peut-être pour maintenant, oui. 
Wow, I had no idea you speak <laughs> French. Well, it's probably a little bit of a slapstick French, but uh, certainly if my that camera feedback... was on, people would see my face like mind blown. <laughs> Certainly, we know the feedback. Uh, when somebody asks about variations, I know what they're really asking about is multilingual support, and specifically for intranet sites or any sites that a lot of people uh, go to when you have a multinational or multilingual company. Um, I will only tell you this. It is a huge, big project that the team has been talking about doing and has been working on. If you talk to Andy Hayon, uh, or previously Dave Cohen, who lead that area in intranet. Uh, they take it as a top user voice that they'd like to check off their list. Uh, I won't break any timing, and I'm not going to say any details about the what or the how, um, but I will tell you that I think there's going to be some, some please smiles if this recording were to pause now exactly where we stopped in about two weeks, and then we can continue the conversation. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time, Mark. Thank you for answering the questions. Absolutely. Uh, you did good, on not did good on not spoiling anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I should have pushed you a bit more. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> you did pretty good. And thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us live in this first episode. I know it's been a bit tough on the audio and technical side, but we're going to do... We're going to at least try to do a uh, way better uh, next time. At least now we know the workaround. If you don't have the fix, as long as you have a workaround, it's not a red incident in the health portal. So remember, it's, it's just a warning. Uh, but talking about next week. And we're going to have a final word from our producer at the SharePoint conference to talk a bit about the conference coming up in 2020. I'm Dan Holm. I'm the director of product marketing for SharePoint, Yammer, and Microsoft Stream. What makes the SharePoint conference special is the SharePoint community, which is the best community in tech. We have people from all over the world, 37 countries on six continents and all 50 United States coming together at one place at one time to share, to share their knowledge, their best practices, to share their thoughts and questions and to get answers. The SharePoint conference is the best place to connect with the product groups that actually build SharePoint, OneDrive, Yammer, Stream, Microsoft Teams and other products. And by connecting with those teams, you can actually provide us feedback so we can make the product better. And of course, you can get your questions answered. The SharePoint conference is for everyone. People who use SharePoint and Microsoft 365 on a day-to-day -day basis, people who drive adoption, people who support and administer the platform, secure it, and of course, people who build custom solutions on top of SharePoint and Microsoft 365. What makes the SharePoint conference special is not just the sessions, it's the exchange of ideas. It's the fact that you're able to network with people from your industry and from across the globe and discover new ways of driving success with these tools. If there's one thing you should know about the SharePoint conference, it's that it's about way more than SharePoint. It's about how organizations can really come together to drive collaboration, communication, and engagement, and how you can make your day-to-day -day work more effective and productive with Microsoft 365.